What's up, brother? What's going on, bud? Dude, so uh, I guess we got to tell everybody about uh, what's happening this spring. A couple pretty exciting things. Yeah, super excited with, uh, you know, with the news you're about to give out. <laughs> yeah, right. So uh, th- I guess the first thing that we're going to announce is that we uh, we have a new relationship with uh, Schedulicity, um, the Schedulicity app, which is a scheduling app. And um, um, I mean, we've been using it for a couple weeks now. So yeah, it, it's doing everything that I, I, you know, that my previous app was missing. And I'm totally digging everything that, you know, I'm allowed to do in it. You know? Exactly. It, it, it's pretty cool. I mean, I, I suggest anybody that's looking for a scheduling app uh, for any kind of scheduling to go look at it. We, um, I mean, from our side, it's just been so cool and so easy to use, really. And even our clients are starting to use it now. And, and they're really digging just the ease to make um, online appointments. Yeah, all my clients, you know what I mean? They, uh, they can, they're to- in total control of making their own appointment with me. Mm-hmm. And uh, they really, um, they're, you know... Just a big, huge shout out. They love it. Yeah, I, you know what's pretty cool about it too is, um, I mean, we I haven't experienced it too much, but you know, just reading their literature and stuff about it is how if you have a hole in your book, they'll actually fill it. So like, it could be a new client or whatever. So the schedule, the app is actually set up like a like a community, so they can um, they yeah. they can, you know they can they can fill your book for you, right? Yeah, and, yeah. The whole marketing part of it, you know, to help you market your business is is pretty brilliant actually it's pretty genius it's pretty cool you know especially because you know a lot of us that move to a suite you know we kind of we're just starting out learning how to you know operate our own business so right they, they have these things in place to really help you uh grow your business yeah i love it and um i'm also again i haven't done it yet but um reading it i can't wait for is hey you can actually put products on sale and as your clients book their appointment it'll allow them to it'll let them know that it's on sale and by the way they can buy it even before they come into uh into the shop and then you just hand it to them and send them on their way. So I'm pretty excited about trying that option out. I can't wait to, uh, till some of the spring deals start coming out so we can start implementing those. Yeah. And that's not the only thing that that's exciting that's happening with us. I know. Well, you know, officially what we did is we signed an ambassadorship. So we're doing like an ambassadorship and, um, we're, two things that we're super excited to announce is one is that the ambassadorship is with our dear friend Presley Poe. Yep. And uh, so Presley's going to be on the ambassadorship as well. And that Schedulicity is is sponsoring our show that we're doing with Presley Poe and Frederick Maryland on April 7th. <laughs> on April 7th. So on April 7th, we're doing a, a, a really cool hair show. It's going to have Presley Poe and, and the newly awarded... Naha Award winner. <laughs> Naha Award winner. That's right. Uh, Blush in Maine that everybody knows on Instagram. And God, her work is incredible. Uh, yeah. And she's teaming up with Updo Guru, Casey Powell. And, and Casey's amazing, too. And um, they're actually going to do a class together as well. So on April 8th, they're going to have a class, like an Updo class. Uh, yeah, Updo we have Brave three classes going on April 8th. Uh, and you can learn more about that at PresleyPoeAndFriends.com. Uh, but, dude, that, that's going to be a killer class. You yes, know. it's it is. I mean, somebody I, today on Instagram, somebody was like, "It's going to be an epic hair weekend," you know, and it's so cool that we can um, that we that we're kind of bringing it to Maryland. Yeah, yeah, and we get to be a part of it and get to. I mean, I, I'm just so excited. I can't wait. I can't wait either. But let's drop a couple more names. So we got Presley Poe. We yep. got Blush and Maine. Yep. We got Updo Guru. Yep. We got Schmegs and Bacon. Yep. The Miss Schmegs and Bacon. We got uh, from uh, Project Runway. You know, um, Lynn we, Nugent. We got Lynn Nugent, and we got um, Miss Jackie, Jackie Davis. Davis. Miss Jackie Davis. So uh, Jackie was on the podcast too. So uh, definitely listen to that. But and, uh, and to me, just as cool is we got Ben Mullen from as our MC. Oh my God! Yeah, he's MCing the whole whole thing, and that guy's a riot. And anybody who knows Ben Mullen, he he has uh, the Ben Mullen Project. Uh, if you ever wanted to do public speaking, he has the class to take. A hundred percent. I mean, like if you ever want to um, present in front of a stage or even present it in front of your uh, your salon staff or, or you know whatever. I mean, Ben's got this just, just this incredible program. Also, we have hashtag Presley Poe that Cosmoprof is uh, you know underwriting for us, which has been fantastic. We the outreach for that has been incredible. Yeah, it sure has. I mean, we um, I, I mean, just the entries have been incredible, right? So I know Presley, I know Presley's kind of nervous because she got to make a pit. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> you know, she actually called me and was like, oh, I don't know what to do. There's so many great entries here. But I mean, again, let's just thank Cosmoprof Beauty um, and uh, Megan Gantz, really. Let's just thank them a lot for, for, for supporting this. Yeah. Oh, I, dude, I am so stoked. You know what I'm stoked about? What's that? About saying it. Go ahead. Can I say it? Is yeah. it time? Is it time? Is it time? Is it time? So, for the very, very first time, we'd like to, uh, Hair Industry and Schedulicity presents Your Day Off Podcast. Join me for a smoke. 
Hey, hey, welcome to your day off. My name is Corey, and of course, I'm sitting with my best bud, Tony. What's up, bud? Hey, man, what's up? What's going on? <laughs> yeah, I mean, d- dude, today is like, once again, it's another person that we've tried to talk to for at least six months or so, and just our schedules couldn't get together. Um, so now it's finally together, and I'm excited about it. Yeah, I'm totally excited. It's, he, it, you know, he's part of this, uh, I'm, I'm sure there's some some women in, in the band and stuff, but he's part of this boy band that's been taking uh, social media by storm. You ain't kidding. I mean, like, well, I think we should get into it. So we, uh, so we've already talked to Philip, yep, Wolf, and we've already talked to uh, Ricky Hair Godzito. Yep. Um, so today we get to talk to the uh, the unbelievable Alfredo Lewis. And uh, go ahead. Yeah, I, I, I'm excited, right? I mean, you watch those guys, and, and all of us, you know, it, no matter what level in your career, and you just, but you watch those guys do what they do, mm-hmm. and you're just like, wow. Just wow is an understatement too, you know. It's a, well, you know, you know what's interesting about those guys is that they, um, I'm talking three collectively, um, is that they're always like a half a step ahead of the next trend, right? Like they started off with all these images on Instagram and they got a lot of interest and they got a lot of, you know, pre-algorithm, I don't even know what any of that means, but pre-algorithm and stuff. And they, they created, um, you know, just these great images. And now they've, they've clearly moved over to video. I mean, every, all of them are posting a lot more video now, and that's obviously. I mean, we talked to Olivia about it, you know, and and video is the way to go. Right. I mean, most of us, you know, are you know, we ride the trend, and there's those few that create the trend, right? They and jump wave to wave, right? Hundred percent, right? They're just they're just somehow they just know it, uh-huh. and that's these guys. Hopefully, we can uh we can we can jump a trend with them. <laughs> right. <laughs> so uh um do we bring him in? Do we bring him in? introduce? Let's brother. do it, Mr. Alfredo Lewis. Thank you very very much for joining us on your day off. Hey guys, how are what's up, man? What's, going what's on? up? I'm excited to be here. You, we're ta- we're completely excited to have you. Um, like I said, everything that we said is absolutely true, and how we feel about you and uh, you. and and the fellas. Um, it's pretty cool, man. That was a kind yeah. introduction. <laughs> you guys are saving the rest for later i'm sure i'm you're just warming me up <laughs> <laughs> oh, <it's coming. laughs> so so before we get into uh you know the rest of uh this boy band trilogy <laughs> where did where did you grow up where are you from you know what i'm actually one of the few people that was born and raised in california where i still reside so um i grew up in orange county so I grew up in the Anaheim area, like by Disneyland, and uh, I moved to LA when I was 17 years old. So wow, wow. Yeah. So what? 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 Uh, did you grow? Did you move there with your parents? Did you move no, there by yourself? No, you know, I was going to go to college, and um, I mean, honestly, just to be blunt with you, I, I came out of the closet because I'm, gay. <laughs> and I, uh, you know, I was like, I got out of high school, and I think I was just like tired of, because believe it or not, even though I don't think I was that passable as straight, but uh, you know, in in high school, I was doing the high school thing like back then in that time especially it just wasn't as okay as it is today you know so uh I was just like I'm not gonna do this in college again that's where my head was at I'm not gonna go to college so I went to my parents and I told them I was gonna go to acting school and drop out of college and they were not uh they were not very pleased with that at the time they were kind of like what do you mean you know because I was already enrolled in college and I'm gonna go do you know the college thing for another four to six years yeah, that's bold. That's that's ballsy, right? I mean, but unfortunately, like I think most parents react that way, right? They're like, "What? You going to hair school? Or well, you I going to?" Then I like dropped or? another bomb. Bomb. I'm like, "By the way, mom, I'm gay." <laughs> 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 I don't, like hit them with like two things at once. It was like I double bombed them, you know. So, what you, were they shocked? My mom was like, "But you went with that really pretty girl to the prom this year. I don't understand." <laughs> <laughs> I'll never forget with that. Me because I'm gay, mom. <laughs> <laughs> she was like, "What?" Yeah. So uh, was she your best friend? Was the girl my best friend? Yeah. Um, she was a very good friend. Yes. Well, not, I wouldn't say she was my. I had a best girlfriend, but she had a boyfriend, so she went with him. But like, I went with like one of my good girlfriends. Yeah. For sure. I think that's awesome. Yeah, I think it's pretty cool too. <laughs> yeah. So how how long did you uh, how long did you do the uh, the acting thing? It didn't last long. So of course. In high school, I was in all theater and all that stuff. And I started off high school getting teased a lot. So I was bullied a lot in high and junior high and high school, for sure. Um, and it wasn't always happy times. But somehow I figured out, like, through humor, I think, and just being like, actually, I was actually, I would definitely was like a partier in high school. 
um, mm -hmm. I got in with like somehow like the cooler kids, so if you will, you know, whatever that means, right? But um, I started hanging out with like some of the cheerleaders and football players. Like I got into that uh, world. Um, so, so you know, it, high school was a lot better for me. It was a lot more fun than I like mm -hmm. like the last few years of high school. The first two years were kind of hard, difficult. Right, and then so then you then went from college to to, to acting school. Yeah, so, so acting the, school. So in doing, high school, yeah. like acting was great. I got the lead in every every play. You know, <laughs> I really did, and um, <laughs> I would always get the lead, and and uh, and I thrived in that whole drama thing. Um, and mm -hmm. then you know, obviously, to come to Los Angeles, as we know, it's a completely different world than Orange County in a high school theater. And, right. Um, I went to acting school. It's called the Stella Adler Academy, and People that are into acting probably definitely know who she was. She's no longer with us, but uh, there was a New York and an LA Academy and um, it was rough. I tried to do the whole, you know, auditions thing and I, really quick, I got discouraged quick. It wasn't like years. It was like maybe less than a year. And I decided right. like, I had read this article about somebody who was a hairstylist and did hair for all the television and movies. And this, she, her name's Debbie Mazar. A lot, she's an actress. She ended up getting all these movie roles and transitioning into acting. So in the beginning, my thought was to do hair for television and movies and that that would be like a way to network and get to know people in the industry. Um, mm -hmm. And then I ended up loving the craft, like in school even, because I know school is totally different than what we, you know, what happens once we get behind the chair. But right. um, I actually got really inspired by hair and excited about it. And we went on salon visitation and I just saw the everything going on in the salons. And I'm like, wow, this is, this is for me. It just clicked. And then um, acting, I just kind of kicked acting to the curb. So in that year that you were in acting school, is there anything like, what did you learn there that you're still using? Um, you know, I've, I've never anything. thought, I'm going to, this is kind of funny because I've never really thought about it. Well, I've thought about the ones that I think, the stage presence and like the way that I'm able to speak definitely all those years in acting and even in high school, I think that they helped me be comfortable around people, be comfortable getting up in front of an audience. Um, and then also the acting school I went to was a lot of pressure. Like they would just be like, I'd say two words and they'd be like, no, you know, you're <laughs> in like, we don't believe you, you know, all that type of stuff or, um, it was, it was harsh. Like it was, people would cry and, you know, like grown men would like run out of there crying you know um so i think that was a good experience for me though the pressure um and also the rejection i experienced too uh going on auditions and stuff probably definitely helps me today it, it taught me to be uh relentless to not give up probably and you know everything's not always going to be not, be not 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 being afraid yeah. i mean yeah the funny thing is is that he got into the industry but had something else totally in mind. He was just using this as a stepping yeah. stone to yeah. somewhere else. Yeah, it was going to be a stepping stone for sure. It was going to be like just a, a pit stop on my That's way amazing. to be in the next, you know, whoever. I'm I wonder, like, I know that, I know that Ben Mullen's doing some of the, uh, some of the stuff, but I wonder if Alfredo has something to, to kind of offer the industry from that perspective as well. I mean, you don't have to be a dick. That's not what I'm saying, but you know, maybe he does a class or, or, or maybe, you know, to kind of like, use his acting skills, I guess, to, to, to further others in the industry. What am I trying to say? I don't know. You I, mean, know I mean, just face your fears. Yeah, yeah, definitely. That could be something. Face your fears and also stage presence. I mean, it's funny because when I, I mean, we'll get to that later because it was later in my career, but when I did end up starting to do education and get up, um, it definitely helped, but I was like a nervous wreck for like the first year to two years. I would almost throw up sometimes before I'd go on stage or I'd just be shaking, oh. like holding my blow dryer, you know, like, it, it wasn't like I just went up there and like turned it on. It was definitely a process, right. you know? Yeah. All right. Yeah. So we'll get to that. Yeah. So we'll rewind back to, uh, so, all right. So you, in acting school, all right, I'm going to drop this. I'm going to go to hair school to, did you go to hair school or did you apprentice? I did. So um, I went to hair school. I, I just hit my 25 year anniversary uh, in the business, like actually like, you know, in a salon. In Happy November. anniversary. Thank you. But um, I first started at a tech school, to be honest with you, like, and it was part time because I, I wanted to work and go to school. And in my mind, I thought there's no way I can do two full time because it's like a job. So uh, 
I went to uh, LA Trade Tech and it was cool because it was, there was a huge African community, uh, American community there. And they taught me so much about hair, like things that like, you know, hard press and braiding and, 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 and work like that. Um, and I loved everybody there. It was such a cool group of people. I had so much fun there, but it was going to take me like three to four years <laughs> with my, the wow. time I was putting in to actually get the 1600 hours, you know, cause it was a very part-time school. So, uh, <laughs> what happened is I, I started getting antsy and I ended up transferring to a private school. I got a loan and I went to a private school. It was called Yamano beauty uh, college and it was a Japanese school, but now I think it's Marinello they've changed but it's it's on Wilshire in Los Angeles and um I went there and it was really cool because 75 percent of the people spoke Japanese only so those of us that didn't speak Japanese like myself we almost had like private lessons because our we had like a specific teacher that would just work with us um you know in a different area oh, he hacked the system you see that <laughs> it's part of the the it's a, we're seeing a theme here but uh <laughs> but i so then it was it went much faster and then i just i worked i would go to school till five and i would work and it was crazy until you know two in the morning or whatever and i would go back to school the next day and i and i i was pretty diligent i wanted to get out you know as fast as possible so i had i can't remember how many hours i had when i got over there but it was maybe about a seven seven months but i went to the private school and got through it and you know got my license were you like waiting tables and bartending and stuff? What were you doing until 2 a.m.? <laughs> oh my God, I'm going to be so honest right now. So back then there was, you know, there was no social media. There was no Facebook. There was no, so I was actually a phone sex operator. <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> this is so bad. I've never told anybody this. Yeah. So, and I would just like, but I would pretend to be a girl, like on the, instead of boy. And oh, stop. You, you, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> We got to hear a little bit of that, Alfredo. <laughs> I can't believe I, I've never said this before. See, you guys are getting an exclusive right here. But so a friend of mine was doing it, and it was easy. And they were the only thing I could find that, like, had the hours that I needed. Like, I thought about the waiter thing, but I had no experience. And, you know, it, it was just super easy. And it wasn't, but like, he had experience it wasn't as naughty as you would, like, I did. I did, like, yeah, like, it wasn't as, like, naughty as you might think it was. Like, the part they put me in, it was more conversational. So it was just like businessmen that like were lonely and needed somebody to talk to. But if they had any idea who, what they were spending four ninety nine <laughs> a minute to talk to me, they'd probably be pretty upset right now. Uh, <laughs> now, what is it? They were talking to you as a girl, though, yes, right? Yes, yes. And uh, yeah. What is it? Your voice is way too deep for this. I'm not going to do it right. I mean, I don't even. Come on, Alfredo. 25 years ago. But um, no, I would just like, you know. Yeah, nobody ever questioned it. And there was a lot of guys that did it. It wasn't, it was crazy. Like if you would see the actual people who it was, sometimes it would be like a, you know, 55 year old, like lady, like saying that bearded man. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. No, there was definitely bearded men there. And at the time it paid really well. Like at the time for me being so young, being 18, I think it was $17 an hour. And, well, you know, wow. at that time was like a lot of money for somebody, even today, right? But um, to be so young, like every other job I looked at was like $8 an hour, $7 an hour. And, you know, I was trying to support myself and pay for school. And it just, it was just like, you know. The, okay, it, what was your, uh, what, what was your uh, <laughs> hashtag? What was your, uh, what was your character's name? I don't, you know what it would change? I would change name. It wasn't like... Cause, but it is true. Sometimes they would ask to talk to you, like they would request you, yeah. you know. But honestly, I had a few, and I don't remember. It's like twenty five years ago, but it was He's seven so months lying. of my life. No, I swear, I, I don't remember. I would make I one up Madonna. right now. Madonna, I know, right? <laughs> You'd be so proud. No, um, she probably would be actually. I was, but yeah, no, I, I don't remember the name that I used at all. All right, so we'll, we'll, we'll save it you. Was fun, I'll it save was actually you. a fun group of people in there. We, we had fun, and there was a lot of times when no calls would come in. So then it was chill. Like sometimes I'd get four calls a night, and I'd be there for eight hours. It wasn't like call after call after call. You know, it was a pretty easy right. job. Oh, that's so, awesome. did you, um, so did you – so then you graduated after seven months <laughs> yes. from, from, the, from the hair school. And then did you immediately go into a salon? Or I well, Before we get into that – Hold on. Sorry. I want to get into like, you know – so his so 
when your parents were upset with you because you dropped out of college to go to acting school, <laughs> right? Okay. When you say, Hey mom, I'm going to drop out of acting school. Now I'm going to go to hair school. How did, how was that response? Were they like, so you should have stayed in college or were they? No, like, they, they actually became supportive. Like they got over the whole gay thing and they, my parents are such amazing people. Like they're st they just had their 50th wedding anniversary, like, and they're still so exactly. cute together. And like, they're just really beautiful people. And now it's so weird. They're where they're way more, they're like gay activists, you know, and I'm not like really at all. Like, I mean, I believe right. in like equality for everybody. I don't care who you are, you know, but like my parents are very like, we went to the glad golf, you know, dinner tonight at the, at the club. Like, and I'm like, Oh, that's awesome. Mom. Like they're just, they're pretty cool. They kind of, they're a low key version of like meet the fuckers, you know, like, uh, you know, like, right. like the Barbara Streisand, Dustin Hoffman character, you know, like they're but like not that crazy, but they're like very like free and open and just really good, good, like good people. Um, so they were actually, I think happy that at least I knew what I was going to do. They, they were not like, hair school you know they they actually helped monetarily um you know to some degree and were very mm -hmm. like you know supportive of it and and uh, proud like you know i think they were worried but they if they were they never said anything they were just happy that i had some focus i think the worst thing sometimes for a parent right is like i don't know what i'm gonna do i'm just gonna work and hang out i think they were happy that i actually had a purpose you know oh that's wonderful. yeah that's, that's pretty cool yeah, man. that is cool all right now you go ahead. now i can go yeah <laughs> <laughs> now that now that we're past the uh, the the sex phone, I know operator. they never knew that part. I told her I told them later in life that I did that. All right, we'll tell them about this podcast. <laughs> no, it's just already no, 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 no. Okay, my mom followed me on Instagram. She like she I see her like all my stories. She's watching everything. Oh, my good for mom, man. Good for mom, the gay activist. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's all. So you graduated from school, and then did you um did you immediately go into a salon or so um. We, when we went on salon visitation, we went on a few, but the last one, they took us to Beverly Hills salons. And I was like, we were right down the street. Um, you know, my school is Wilshire La Brea. So for those of you that don't know, Los Angeles, that's maybe a mile and a half from Beverly Hills. Um, so they took us in that area. And um, we went to a salon at the time called Christoph Salon. And I would talk about yeah. Christoph. It's still here today and still busy and still, uh, you know, an active salon at that time. He was actually doing uh, Bill Clinton and Hillary Clinton's hair way before Hillary, you know, back in when he was president, before before right, Lewinsky, yeah. before all that. And, uh, <laughs> and um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, but you know, it was like in, in the early and and there was a story at the time. Um, I'm aging myself because some people, but he got his hair cut by Kristoff on Air Force mm -hmm. One, and it was a scandal because you know the amount that came out that was charged and. You know, I forgot what it was, but it was like, oh, you're there. spending our tax money on like a haircut. And yeah. But I thought, of course, like that was the coolest thing ever. And like, wow, this guy's a gangster, you know? And so right. um, when we went in there, I saw him and saw the salon. And at the time, all the celebrities were, it was like the place to be. And so mm -hmm. uh, I just got it in my head. That's where I'm going to work. And when I got my license, I honestly just marched in there with my license, like all excited, like I'm here. And, um, <laughs> and they were like, uh, yeah, we're not hiring right now, you know? Uh, so I said, well, that's okay. I'll wait for him. I'll, I want to talk to him. Like, I'll just sit and wait. And I waited all day. And at the end of the day, he finally was like, who is this kid? This is nuts. He kept like kind of asking the receptionist, like, point, like what, what's going on with, like, why is that guy like sitting here all day, this kid? So I think he liked my, um, that I was once again, relentless, you know? Um, and I told him, Tenacity, I, think, I, told him right? I do whatever yeah, it takes. So I was like, I'll shampoo until something opens up. I'll sweep. I just want to be in this atmosphere. Um, and so the next day they called me and they said, you know, actually there's somebody here that wants to start using an assistant. So can you start Monday? And I, uh, you know, that was it. <laughs> I'll be there Sunday. <laughs> yeah. And it was great. It was, it was difficult at first as course. Um, but it was great for me because it just put me in this immediate, again, high pressure situation. And remember, in my mind, I was still a little bit in the like wanting to do movies and TV. Cause even though I fell in love with hair, I still at first was like, I'm going to get some experience and still do I, I don't need to be an actor, but I, I still wanted to like possibly do uh, movie, you know, movie hair or, or t for television and do, do that, go that route. How long were you a, a, an assistant? So I love talking about this because nowadays I feel like with social media and stuff, I see a lot of people just going right into hair from school. Um, I assisted for almost three years 
and, and I wouldn't change that for the world because I it was so hard. I was so poor, and I got paid so little. Um, but I was learning from the top people in the business, and I was allowed to work on celebrities. And you know, I ended up doing that on my own later. But just I was put in these situations of like, first it was just shampooing them, but then it was like, can you put on their base color? Um, can you do a blow dry, you know? And, and I just, you know, it just kept building. They kept giving me more responsibility. And then they started letting me do models on, you know, certain days where they would, and it just, uh, I wouldn't change it for anything because I, I learned how to formulate. Um, and then they were very good there. I was always been more of a colorist at heart, but they did at one point, uh, do you guys know Jonathan Anton? Yeah, yeah, sure. Towards the end of my assisting, uh, there was a guy named Corey Powell, who he's at uh, Salam Benjamin now, and he was at Sally Hirschberger. They, uh, they asked me to go work with him for a little while, and he was a cutter and colorist. And when I got there, I was allowed to do almost all of his color. Not completely, but you know, a lot more right. freedom. And then I also learned a lot from him about cutting and styling, which I wasn't exposed to a lot, and that was for like the last year. So I felt like I got a really well-rounded um, education because that, to me, that's when real education happens in my book is when you assist. Um, so sometimes, you know, I guess now people learn from YouTube and, and stuff like that, but to really be in it and get that. Well, I think on. anybody, I think anybody that's starting off in their career, whether they go to college or whether they, um, you know, whether it's hair school or whatever it is, I mean, there's two ways to get paid and, and, and one is with money. And the other is with experience. Yes. And, and, and I would argue that over an entire career, that experience is going to make you more money at the end. Oh, yeah. I, I got a quick story. Yeah. I, I got out of school and I thought I, I knew everything. And I, I was working at this uh, little salon. I just went right to the floor. And all of a sudden, I, I kid you not, a week later, I had two people in the <laughs> shop that I colored at the same time that, who came back. Both of them are crying. Yeah. <laughs> I kid you oh, not yeah. both of them are crying I'm like yeah I need help so <laughs> that's when I, I joined uh, a salon and, and went to, through a, an apprenticeship program. program and but yeah it, it was oh, oh, <laughs> scary see see learned experience yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean it's tough but like if you think about it um, especially today look at where we are like this is such an exciting time to be in the industry like the opportunities are endless and if you go to college, like I'm not telling people not to go to college. I think college is great if that's where you want to go. But hair is almost, it's like a college. Like you're, it's not like you're going to get your license and the next day, you know, be making six figures. You got to work for it. Like you have to put in the time, you have to assist. Then after that, you got to build a clientele. So you're putting up, you're, to me, you're putting in just as much time almost as going to a four-year school. It's, it's a commitment. And 100%. Yeah. That's a, that, 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 you know what, Alfredo? That, I think that was just like a light bulb that went out. It's like you still got to put the work in, you know. So for 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 all those parents out there, you know, there's still work being done. You know, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, and in all, so that's cool. Yeah, and in all per professions, there's going to be different levels of success. You know, it's not just. I think there's this misconception out there, like, oh, you're a hairstylist, like you're not, you can't make that much money, or you're not. But that's just so wrong. And it's not about living in LA. Like it's easy for me to like, oh well, he he did hair in Beverly Hills, but that's today. It's so different. Um, it doesn't matter. You can be anywhere. Like you could be in any city across the United States. I feel and and be hugely successful in the industry. Yeah, we say that all the time, mm -hmm. I mean, especially with uh, you know the internet and social media nowadays. You could be anywhere and be very successful. Yes. Completely. We um, we're actually uh, maybe tease or maybe like <laughs> a fall flat, but we're actually trying to arrange a podcast while we're at Premiere Orlando, um, and we're going to do it with a, a bunch of artists from Jacksonville, including Sam V, and that's that's going to be the conversation of it. Is is how you don't have to be an LA hairdresser or a New York hairdresser to be relevant anymore. It's true. So and um, I love Sam. Sam is the king. I'm just Sam is the king. He, I'm like a secret fan of Sam V. I don't think he knows it yet. I I got to meet him at the Redken Exchange. Um, mm -hmm. yeah, but we, it was like so brief cause it was like an event and so many people were around, but I was like, I, he probably doesn't even realize it, but I kind of secretly was like, Sam, so many times, but I've never like been next to him to get to speak. You know what I mean? Just like more watched him oh, and like, like everybody else just in awe. I, I feel like he to this day sets the bar for, in my opinion, what an educator is, the way he presents himself the way he keeps the audience engaged. He does all those interesting, like he has all these little, you know, to get them back, bring them back. And uh, mm -hmm. I, I've never seen anybody do what he does. 
he, he and like not even just on his stage presence but he's also to be admired the way that he walks a floor yes you know everything he walks a everything. floor and he is like the most humble dude and like yes. he truly truly uh he has more energy on the floor than anybody else on the floor and it's just so infectious you know and, and he's so kind and nice to everybody it's amazing to kind of we got to walk behind him a little bit when we were in philly and it was just amazing how how he works the room yeah, you know? yeah. so Big, big shout out to Mr. Sam Via. Yes, <laughs> you know, um, that, so, okay, so then we get on the floor and then uh, what'd that look like and where did that happen and all? Um, so what happened at that time, we're going back, is um, honestly John Frieda happened because, uh, you know, as, as in all, I mean, we see it in, throughout time. If you've been in the industry long enough, um, Christoph was like the place to be and everybody was there. And then uh, John Frieda came in, Sally Hirschberger, and they opened a salon together. Um, in Los Angeles, you know, from New York and half my salon at that time went there, which happens a lot. Like they'll, they'll go in like a group cause there's all these alliances, especially it was a specialty salon. So when there's cutters and colorists that have to collaborate, uh, they'll go together because they're afraid that their clientele are going to split, you know, half may stay. Yeah. So, um, at that time it was time for me to go on the floor anyway, but, uh, I was working for somebody, uh, with somebody, well, Corey Powell, Lori Goddard, I don't know if Lori Goddard, but she's been in the industry. She does still to this day slammed, does like major actors, actresses. And, and she said, you know, you should go on the floor right now. It's a good time because half the salon is leaving. You're ready. And mm -hmm. there's going to be people that are going to stay anytime. So this was, this was at Christoph? Yes. So I went on okay. the floor at Christoph as a colorist at that time. And it was a, a smart time for me because being that like half the colorist went to John Frieda, you know, there's some people that st love the salon, right? Like, I'm not going to leave Christoph. This is my home. This is where I stay. And they all knew me because, you know, I was very personable with all the clients. And I, I was like so good at like giving the best shampoo and, you know, the way I treated them. Mm -hmm. If I did a base color, you know, I made sure to connect with everybody. And so when I was on the floor, it worked well for me. A lot of clients, not, a, you know, enough to get me started, um, stayed and asked for me and started requesting me once I was on the floor. And so, um, I quickly started building my own clientele there. You know, I would say it took me two years to have a good, good clientele. Um, but I was able to make money. And the way it was there, it was percentage. So um, I think it's changed today. But back then, the more you made, the, your, you'd bump up into the next percentile. So it would be 40%. And then if you made up to a certain amount, you go to 50 and so on. And it actually went all the way up to 70% there. Um, oh yeah so you can make really good money there if you were booked you had to be to get 70 you had to pretty much be five days a week booked hairstylist you know like in the chair and was it just booked or was it like did you like have to have a certain retail percentage or did you have to have a pre-booked percentage like you know all the business side no, of it, it, was, it all it? went in with dollars brought in um they it was interesting because retail i know it's like they always say it's the hardest thing right they didn't put a lot of pressure on us to sell retail um but we did sell it uh, we, it was a L'Oreal salon. Uh, so, mm -hmm. you know, of course we had like Kerastas and I'm trying to, but, but they had, they were allowed to have other brands as well, but color had to be L'Oreal. So, and then as time went on it, they opened it up a little bit to the other brands there. Like they brought in like Redkin and matrix and stuff later. But when I first started, it was strictly like a L'Oreal uh, color salon. So, um, but the products wise, the aftercare, there was a lot of different brands that they carried at the time. But there wasn't a lot of pressure put on us uh, to sell it. Yeah. 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 I think the front desk had pressure on them. It was like, it was the, <laughs> no, because the, they had like five, six receptionists at all time. It was a huge salon. It was like 40 wow. of us, two stories. So I think really they had them seal the deal at the end, the girls at the front desk. Because they all had their hair done by us back then. We would give them blowouts in the morning and use the products on them. And so when the doors would open, they'd be, everybody would be asking them about their hair, you know? Who did your hair? What they use? Yeah, that's smart. That's pretty smart. Yeah. So what? Um. So after Christoph, where where where'd your career lead you? Um. So after Christoph, um, the Argyle Salon and Spa opened, and the Argyle Salon and Spa is no longer there. Um. But a lot of the people that I had relationships with went over there. So um, that is where Brazilian Blowout was born. So the people who own the Argyle are the people who started the brand Brazilian Blowout. So um, I finally ended up moving. I was at Christoph for almost 11 years. And then I moved over to, um, to, to the Argyle eventually. Mm -hmm. And um, when I got there, uh, 
they, that's when I was approached about education. I'm giving you the Ooh. fast version of the story, but I, you know, I got over there <laughs> and they said, um, you know, we think that you'd be good on stage. Brazilian Blot was just getting started. And I was a colorist, remember. I, I, I would like blow dry the, my bangs of my client to check their color, honestly, you know, or like the front piece that I was that person. And then I would right. like send them to somebody. Wait a second, wait a second. I see Philip doing all that for you now. I know, so and, you can't... not a lot's changed. It's really, <laughs> not a lot's changed. But I can, do a, I can do a beautiful blowout now and I can cut hair, not like Philip at all, but, but I can <laughs> cut hair. Um, but I, I went to the Argyle and they said, you know, we love your personality. We think you'd be fun. We need educators. Have you ever thought about like education? Um, so at first I said no, because to me, Brazilian blowout was all about blow drying and flat ironing and styling the hair. And I think mm -hmm. sometimes we want to stick in our comfort zone with what we know we're good at. And if it was a color demo, I'd be like, yeah. But I went, <laughs> I went to a class and um, what happened was everybody in the salon at that time was making like three times the amount of money of people who weren't doing Brazilian blowout. It was like a fad. It was like, a, it blew up. And so, right. honestly, I think it was greed. Let's just be honest. <laughs> it was jealousy. Um, I was like, wait a minute. Like, these people are like, you know, um, and all my clients were talking about it, asking, like, are you going to do it? You know, I would love to have you do this on me, but I'll go to, you know, Bob or, you know, whatever. Whoever. You know, Giuseppe, whoever it was in the salon, right, that, that was doing them. But I said, I decided to go to a class. And, at the time, the, the president of Brazilian Blowout, her name's uh, Brittany Pinker, she, she was just so captivating. She wasn't a hairdresser, but she would speak at the class and explain it. And I was like, wow, she was just so passionate. She believed in, in it so much that I decided I was gonna give it a shot. And I, um, I, they, they used to have a class at the Argyle every Monday. So at first I just stayed close to home. I was the guy on Mondays. It was such easy money drive to the salon, two hour class, five minutes from my house, go home. Um, oh, nice. But what happened then, there'd be like 200 people there, easy on a Monday, every Monday. What? Oh, because you had to get certified to use it. And so it was blowing up and people were just like, just, you know, in droves coming. And then that turned into like, do you want to do the ISSE show with us? Mm -hmm. And at first they just had a little cardboard table and like a poster, you know? <laughs> and and um, right. so I was like one of the, I think I was the fourth educator. I don't know. I try to remember. Like, well, I was one of the first educators for. So, Alfredo, so when you're teaching Brazilian blowout for 200 people, what was the smoke like in that <laughs> salon? <laughs> Let's talk about it. The F word, right? <laughs> Let's talk about it. Um, you know, it's so fun because also that's. And especially being new, like everybody, when they start doing these blowouts, they use way too much product, which well, just like. So that's what happened at first. So. You were supposed to get certified, I should say. I said you needed to. Back then, you were supposed to. But what happened is, you know, celebrities started talking about it on TV and in articles. I mean, that was a celebrity-driven product. There wasn't Instagram then still at that point. Right. Or, if, you know, and it was like, uh, I think Nicole Richie was the first. Like, the, I don't know if you guys know Andy Lecomte. He's a yeah, yeah. friend of mine. Just a, he's a great guy. And he was doing them on, on a lot of his celebrity clients. And they were talking about it on shows and interviews like oh i just got a brazilian blowout have you heard of it and it just blew up because back then it was all about like what are celebrities doing i think it is to a degree but now with social media that's changed a little bit um and so it just went like crazy so what was happening is people were buying it just and not going to a class <laughs> and not learning the proper way to do it and there was really there was like there was nobody to police that in any way and they were applying it like color and we're hairstylists, more is more. We always think like, oh, if I put more color on, it's gonna be richer, which is true. The more I saturate this hair, you, you wanna work that color into the cuticle. Brazilian blue is so different. That's not how it works. It's less is more. And hairstylists, we're more is more. In, all, in most things, right, in life, we're very like more, you know? So right. that, they just went wild with it. And yeah, and the smoke and all that started happening. So. Um, with Brazilian blow at first, it was amazing. I was traveling. I started traveling all over the U S at first. And, um, what happened was, is the controversy happened. And then like the new, the news would be at our class, you know, like uh, literally to some of us, like waiting for us outside, like, you know, and, um, <laughs> and that was a kind of a weird time. Cause the clients were asking questions like, is this okay for me? Would you give this to me and like hurt me? Like it, it, it got very like it from being a positive thing to 
you know, there was a time I almost was going to leave Brazilian Blue Out and stop doing them. Um, did the brand did the brand help you out with like what that verbiage would be and stuff? Oh like yeah, the media we did, and, and um, I was really close with the owners, and they have had an amazing CEO that he's still there as well, and he's taught me so much about business. Mike mm -hmm. Brady is an amazing guy, and uh, no, um, I think there was a lot of confusion at first, but then eventually, you know, it was about we need to tackle this with education and with honesty and, and go out there. So I decided to stay and fight it out. You know, I'm like, you know what, this is, these people have been really good to me. By that time they had sent me to some international launches. I had been to some countries and all over the U S like, I'm like, you know, I had like a relationship with these people. They were also right. very good to me at the salon, the way they treated me and brought me in. So, um, we decided to tackle it with education. And, uh, then I in, in, ended up becoming an executive there like just from being a hairstylist and educator, I became global director of education uh, wow. for them. And um, our mission, like we doubled our education force when I came on. Uh, I think there was 30 educators and then we doubled it to like 65. And um, I went around and I like went regionally and we had that conversation, like how to talk about how to properly use this product, how to talk about the controversy head on, explain what happened, explain how you have to use it as directed. And then being certified became mandatory. You couldn't purchase uh, anywhere without having taken a test, passing the test, like almost like getting your license to do hair. Um, right. And they, and they changed, they changed it, you know, changed it around. Yeah. Is this where you got the uh, educational uh, bug or get bitten by the educational I'd, bug? I'd already gotten bitten by the bug because by that time I had been doing all the hair shows for a few years. Like I said, I had traveled to, you know, to other countries and, and launched it. Like I, I'm trying to remember where I'd been by that time. Cause I went to so many places, but um, like, I, I think I, I launched the brand in over 15 to 20 countries in the 10 years I was there. Um, some of those were before controversy and some of them were after. So obviously, you know, it changed from time to time, but um, yeah, I just, I kind of, I got the bug for education and then I also got the bug for like the executive side. Cause they really um, valued me as a hairstylist. They valued my opinion. They gave me a seat at the table, you know, stuff like at that time, I think some brands were like, you know, hairstylists, we're not bringing them into this, you know, <laughs> we've got this figured out. We know what the package is going to look like and what, you know, what they want, but they were more like, do you like this? You know, what do you think about this? What, what do you think we should do? Um, how do you think education should look for the brand? <clears throat> um, what, do you, what do you think we should be teaching? And obviously wow. they, they put in there, it was a conversation, but they allowed me to be a part of that conversation. And it, um, well, just being at the table is a huge step. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, like you no, were saying, like, were really very few, you know, I mean, there was some, obviously we've seen that have had their product lines, like the big, bigs, you know, but they, they really just kind of let me come in and create with them, which was really fun. Let the creative be creative. Right. That's right. Yeah. And, um, <clears throat> so I was with them, like I said, for, it was almost over 10 years. Um, and we, we really did change, change it around because they're still here today. They're still doing very well. Um, but it really is education, I think, is the base, the basis of, of their success and why they were able to weather that storm. And you still have a really good relationship with them, right? I do. A really good relationship. Yes. Um, you know, after, after 10, 11 years, it got to a point where I just felt like I wanted to do something different. Um, that was a long time, mm -hmm. long relationship. Uh, but it was a hard decision to make because they are such good people. So I, I actually right. changed my mind like four times. I was like, okay. Um, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm gonna take this jump and I'll be like, no, I'm gonna stay. And then <laughs> in my mind, I was like this tug of war just because they're just such, they really are good, good people. And, um, and we had created B3 together. We didn't even get into that. that. That's when I really got involved. You know, B3 Brazilian Bomb Builder, um, mm -hmm. that, that, that became exciting for me. Because to be honest, just to be, I'm always gonna keep it real, for me to get away from Brazilian Bomb <laughs> a little bit after like dealing with that for all those years, and turning that around with them as a team, um, they came to me with like, what do you think about creating a bond builder? You know, the, the bond builder craze had started and I had told right. them what I didn't like about some of them. Uh, I didn't mm -hmm. hate any of them. I think they're all, I always say that. I think they're all great, but there were things that frustrated me. And so they were like, as an artist. what, excuse me? As an artist? Yeah. Like just me personally, like, you know, some people like certain color, right. Or better than others. I was just like, Oh, I wish that it didn't slow down my processing or, you know, I wish that it wasn't water-based and there was just things that I thought as a, in my mind as a colorist that I would like mm -hmm. to see. 
So we started the research and development for what ended up being B3. That's awesome. And that's what brought me into social media because I had no social media. By that time, there was Instagram and, and you know, there were these artists coming up. Um, like you said, boy band member, you know, <laughs> um, was already like huge and, and there was just all this stuff happening, but I wasn't tuned into it at all. Um, did you put the team together? Like, did you go out and find the artists that, that, that are on the B3 well, team? Well, what happened, I'll honestly say, if I really look back and get honest, Mike Brady, who I told you is the CEO of Brazilian, he, I remember we were at like a work picnic. Like they used to have these picnics and everybody, you know, all the sales first from around the US and all the regionals and their sales force would come. And he made a joke about me on social media because that's when it was like, they were finally saying, hey, we've got to get into social media. Like celebrity was like, good and it's still good but we need to tap in to this and they were we we're definitely a little not late late but a little late because it was already happening and he said well alfredo um he doesn't even i don't even know if he's a hairdresser when i look at his social media all i see is like pictures and he's in, in on vacation somewhere or like you know he's with his friends like do you even do hair but what he was doing <laughs> was i think he was challenging me because he knew that if anybody was going to figure out there it was going to be me so i think he was kind of like it was like a message he, that was how he that's how he tells messages sometimes he'll make fun of you in front of everybody but you have to like if you're smart you have to go well why why did he make that joke it's actually a message you know it was a message like that's how he works so i took that as like okay i know what i need to do i've got to figure it out and start changing the way that i look at things i need to start promoting myself on social um and that was before b3 came out but we were getting close you know to it being ready so right. um we, what happened with me is, yeah, I, I realized like I need to learn from somebody because I don't know anything about it. And Ricky was the first person uh, that I met that, you know, we all know how like personable he is and how like approachable. Um, and I was at a hair show and I saw him and I was like, I, I've been looking for you because one of our sales reps said that Ricky was doing a class with the Butterfly Circus, David Thurston, right? Mm -hmm. Butterfly, and remember that whole, they were touring everywhere. It was, was, it, was this the one in New Orleans? You know, no, this was one, they did a class in California and he was there okay. and he was throwing B3 into the crowd. It had just come out. And he, was, he talked about And that. he was saying, this stuff is amazing. And like, I heard about it from one of our sales reps. She's like, you gotta find this guy here, Godzito. And I, I knew who he, I didn't know what he looked like. I just knew. Right who he was from pictures. Cause back then he wasn't putting pictures of himself. It was just all his, you know, beautiful rainbow hair. So, um, I was at an event and he was there and he spoke and I saw him and I'm like, Oh my God. So I found him at the bar later that <laughs> night. And I was like, I've been looking for you. And he, you know, right away, he was actually with, by the way, good, good choice finding Ricky in a bar. Yeah. What was that? Like, it was like all the hairdressers were there. You know how we all hang out after the, at the shows, but he was with Lynn BC. And it was funny, uh -huh. Lynn didn't say a word to me. Lynn was like so quiet and like, just like, you know, but Ricky was like, here's my phone number. I want to like, I would love to work with you. Call me. And then um, I ended up talking to Ricky and like within, a, I think a few weeks, we had him on a plane with Lynn because by that time, all I did with Lynn is I sent him a box of it with mm -hmm. no note. Like I just like shipped it. I asked Ricky, what's his address? And so I just shipped it. And then he called me and was like, what is this stuff? Can I get more? Like, I can't live without it. It's amazing. Like, I, I'm, I'm out. I'm like, you're out. But I didn't realize the kind of hair he does. Like, he does, like, long, thick, coarse Asian hair all day long, bleaching mm -hmm. out, you know, to, like, level 10s. And so he was, like, <laughs> free pouring it and everything. And, and uh, so we ended up bringing them both out, and we made a video. But it wasn't an Instagram video. It was just a promotional video of them working. And for us, it was like mm -hmm. such new territory from what we were used to. You know, these guys, Ricky had, I can't remember if he had been to Cal, well, he had because of the class, but you know, he hadn't been in California very much. He's from, you know, he was living in Louisiana at the time. And Lynn, I think had just finished like doing hair in his garage. I mean, like that's where they were at the time. Right now, Lynn's a salon owner. And, and they came out and it was just to bring them into a studio and we just kind of let them create. Um, it was a really cool experience. And we just candidly let them talk about what they loved about B3. Um, and it was at that time that they started right away. Like I started watching them because like they were taking their photos and I was like, I was just a sponge. Um, and it started with me just kind of being a fly on the wall and trying to learn that way. And I did, but I was more like a proud mom at first, I think like 
<laughs> I would post on my page, you know, like, look at what Ricky did, like, for B3, you know, look at what Lynn did. Like, it was more like that. I would be posting their work, not necessarily like a repost page because I was, it was like, I looked at B3 as like my baby. So it was more like, like maybe like, I guess what David would do with Pulp, you know, like look at like what our artists are doing with this product type of thing, you know, like this is amazing. And, and uh, eventually they were like, why don't you do this video with us? Like, why don't you jump in on this model? You, you do amazing hair. Um, and then like Mustafa obviously came into the mix and confessions of a hairstylist. And in the beginning, it was a little bit more difficult. I had to sell it because nobody really knew what it was. Uh, right. And I would say Ricky and Lynn helped a lot in the beginning because they were the first two. So I would go to hair shows and I would meet people and, you know, they'd be like, oh, this is Jenny Streeby, you know, and oh, this is, you know, and then Mustafa, none of us knew, but Mustafa, I was obsessed with him because of his work. Still, we're all obsessed with yeah, him. Yeah, but of like, work. you know, I didn't know who he was and somebody was like, that's Mustafa. And I ran up to him at, at the ABS Chicago show that year. And I was like, would you mind styling hair? Like, and he was just so flattered and so kind, which he's still, a, he's just the nicest guy. And he goes, I would love to. And he, I said, well, it's Ricky and Lynn did this model and I want you to do something like whatever you want. So he thought it was backstage and I'm like, no, I want you to go on stage and do it. And, and he's like, right now, but he did it. He was so gracious. He hopped on stage. And what happened was it was already crazy because like, the hair shows kind of changed during that time because people were like, we're going to see these artists now, these social media peep monsters. So there was just, our crowds changed. It, would, it was always crowded, but it was like three times as crowded and everybody's screaming. It was like a concert. But when Mustafa went up there, it was like, you couldn't see past the people. They just came and were just mesmerized by him. And he said very few words. He was just using his hands. And he started doing this incredible mustafa's waves you know mustafa's magic right? yeah and and we were just like he doesn't do color but we don't care <laughs> like we want right. him at the shows yeah. like he's got to be on stage with us and so we brought him in and it just built from there we started building a team we started searching uh instagram and it just started you know in the end when i left b3 there was 92 uh artists on the b3 we called it the b3 family it still is today and I think they had a combined following of like 2.7 million followers as a group collectively. Oh, Obviously, there's going to be some crossover. Um, mm -hmm. But we had them all posting and, and we built the brand through social media, you know, and, and the odds were definitely against us. We had huge competition. Um, but really, with the help of the artist, it became a, a really big success. So, Alfredo, can I put you in executive brain for just a second? Yeah. So kind of explain to like the people that are listening, like, as a as when you're searching for artists or when you're vetting artists what what as as an executive or as a brand what are you looking for even if you're like even if you're like secretly following them on like whatever instagram or, or social media i think for me it's changed over the years because it's been four almost five years now that i've been in social media in instagram mm -hmm. world um and at first with B3, it was different because B3 is a color additive. So it was so open. I wanted, I looked for demographics. I looked for um, followers for sure at, the, at that time. Uh, I was like, who has a lot of followers? But it wasn't all, always about followers. Um, and then it was also color. Like I wanted to see beautiful presented work on their page. And I wanted to see a lot of different categories because that was B3. We had, it's right. for lightning, it's for fashion color, it's for one process color. So I tried my best to have a well-rounded, but at that time, I think it's changed a little bit. It still is, but the bright colors were getting the most attention for sure at that time. And I think they still get amazing attention. But at that time, the people, the people that were building were the ones, right, doing these incredible color melts and rainbow color. So we definitely had a lot of that. Um, but we made a point to make sure, you know, like we got like Elisa loves balayage and pretty little ombre and painted hair. Painted hair was one of the first major balayage artists, her and her managers, her husband, Josh. And um, they were so helpful coming into and that whole aspect of the natural. And she was just such an advocate for the brand. Um, so we just, it just started building and I kind of just, I'll just be honest. I, I really went into 
you know, whose pages look beautiful, who was putting the content out that we wanted to see. Um, mm -hmm. And then also sometimes who wanted it. I wouldn't just pick anybody. They had to love the product. So every single one of those 92 people, I would send them the product. I would talk to them and have a personal phone conversation with them. It was very time consuming, but I wanted to get <laughs> to know them and I wanted to make sure that they loved it. And, and if they didn't, or if I thought like they weren't, I actually wouldn't bring them on because I wanted it to be organic and genuine. Um, and then we started having these retreats where they all came and that's when I actually got to meet a lot of them for the first time, uh, that I didn't get to meet at the shows. There was an a boss. <laughs> you, you were the boss. <laughs> it was crazy. It, it just, it just grew. I didn't really know what I was doing at the beginning. I mean, I knew what I wanted to do, but it was more just like trial and error and just keep moving, you know, let's keep making this bigger. And actually Mike, like I talked about him earlier, he started seeing it. We all did. We started seeing the growth and he would just be like, I want to see more, do more, get more. Like he would put pressure on me. Like who else you got for me? Who else loves me? <laughs> you know? And, uh, and, and sometimes we would have our eye on certain individuals. Like I'll use like a pretty little ombre, for example, we'd be like, wow, she's killing it. Like we've got to talk to her. Um, you know, it was a combination. There were times that when we would have our eyes on certain individuals that we really wanted to try to get on board with B3 and then like segue to Rebecca Taylor. Right. Um, yeah. that was a huge moment for us. And I met her at a show and she came up and she approached me and was like, we saw each other and we were like competitors at the time. So we saw each other in the lobby and we kind of looked at each other and then like moved away. Like I went to like, just walked past her. And then that night she came up to me and she was like, I want to meet you. This is stupid. Like, you know she is. like, she was like, we need to be friends. You look cool. She was like, I'm going to sit by you at the show. Like, I don't even care like what they say. And, uh, we immediately became friends and, and she had expressed to me that she wanted to try B3 and, and she did and she ended up loving it and she's still with the brand today. That's awesome. Yeah. That's pretty That's cool. That's a lot of yeah. Actually, can I, I want to, do you think that, um, you think some of that tribalism is like, is it changing our industry? You know, like, like I don't, when we've actually talked to hairdressers that work that, you know, aren't brand affiliated, it seems like everybody's just in it for the hairdresser and for the industry. But it seems like there's like these fake tribalisms in the industry where, oh, I can't talk to that person or I can't talk to that person because they represent whatever. But I, I don't know. What are your feelings about that, Alfredo? Um, I think there's both. I think for the most part, people don't care. I think for the most part, um, I think that was, there was that time. Like, honestly, I call it the bond builder wars. <laughs> <laughs> like it was crazy it was like star wars but like bond builder version it was so weird and negative and and uh during that time and i think there was a little bit of that like almost like camps or tribes and like if you use this but i think those days are over like i i was always like kill them with kindness i would always tell people on my side like if i see you saying anything negative on social media about another brand or about another stylist or getting into some argument about a brand like there's enough room for everybody like i'm gonna have to take you off the team so that was our thing from day one. And I think it worked very well for us. I was like, do not engage. Like if people come on and start attacking you for the brand you're using, either thank them, put a smile or delete the comment. Like it's up to you, but like, don't do not. I would just tell them to not engage with them. Um, Cause that's not what this industry is about. We talked about it before we went on about the community and the amazing, like, just like uh, support that the industry has for each other as individuals. So what I see right. now is, um, I actually don't see that as much anymore. You know, I, I see a little bit, but it's like, they're the minority to me, the people that will not talk to you because you're working with a certain brand. Um, I think the artists that are with, whether you're with the L'Oreal group or Weller or Schwarzkopf or whoever you work with, we all respect each other. Um, mm -hmm. and, and, and personally, we, you know, we understand that like we're using the brands, hopefully that we love and working with the companies that we admire and that's not going to be the same. There's, you know, that's the best part about our industry is there's a lot of choices and there's a lot of different opportunities out of that, out there. Love, love, yeah. love. hundred percent. I mean, that's what the podcast is all about is just to bring you everybody from all walks of the industry mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and allow you to hear their story and, you know, no, no matter where they're at, but you, you know, you get to know who they are as an artist, not necessarily as a brain, brain artist, as, yeah. yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, even where, All yeah, right. let's go ahead. Go ahead, you're, you're up. Oh, I was just gonna say, even where I'm at now, which we haven't even gotten into yet, like, you know, when it comes to brands, like, 
you know, we'll talk about the brand I'm with now, but I love a lot of different brands out there. There's a, and, and they're, and who they are and what they stand for. And, you know, but I just wanted to choose like what fit best for me. That doesn't mean that I don't like the other brand. I, like I know people from a lot of the brands now and so many incredible people out there in, in the brands mm -hmm. and, and that work with either social or just that are involved in, you know, the day to days of the brands. They're just really cool, but they definitely have each have their own personalities and their own way of doing things. Um, but there's just so there's so many great opportunities out of there out there today, and um, you know I really have uh, affection for a lot of the different brands. So I'm I'm not in my mind like I just don't see the, see the industry being that way. I think you've got to see the the pros and all all the different brands and products that are out there. There's a lot of great innovation. Awesome. That's really well said. I think this is the time to uh, to kick in uh, Philip's quote from our um, from our podcast, which was uh, "This is the error of the artist." Oh my God, we say that all the time. I agree. I think I said that the other day. Just yeah, Philip is the best at quotes. He's such a good like writer. He gave like, us two. He gave us that one, and what was the other one? Evolve or dissolve. Evolve or dissolve. <laughs> <laughs> I love Philip. He's so good. Yeah, I agree with both of those. I, I said the other day that I think that you know we've talked about the change in the industry, and we've talked about you know the artist being in this new place. But I honestly think mm -hmm. we're going to see the evolution of the artist this year more than we've ever seen. Like we've been talking about the change, and we've seen it, but I think this year it's going to be bigger than ever. Like I think our, what is that? So, so from Alfredo, what does that look like? For me What's personally or for, for what I, no, 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 no. What's your opinion of, of how it looks for, for everybody? You I know, think we're going to see more artists working closely with brands. I don't want to say mm -hmm. I was the first, because like I said, there's a lot, like if you look at like a Sam B, like these, these legends, there's people that have mm -hmm. had their own products and their own lines. And, you know, like we can go to the, the late Orbe, amazing, you know, artists or Vidal Sassoon. I mean, like, you know, but, they obviously were working closely with brands. So this isn't something that like all of a sudden, but I think like for me to, like we talked about earlier, have a seat at the table and have mm -hmm. a voice where it's not necessarily my name on the product, but I'm able to work with these giants and, and have a voice. I think we're going to see more of that from artists. I think a lot more artists than people think have a yearning to be a little more involved behind the scenes with brands and with product development. Um, not necessarily even having their own lines, but maybe, um, but also mm -hmm. just being a part of the creative process. Um, we all have things and brands that we think maybe are missing. Like, oh, I wish this brand had this. And I think we're going to finally be able to, our voices are going to start being heard more. And I think we're going to see, you know, closer relationships now between brands and high level positions with the everyday artists. Do you think social media has a lot to play oh, with that? Huge. Yeah, it wouldn't be happening if it wasn't for social media at all. I, I think, you know, social media, to me, there's good and bad in social media, right? Um, and I'm not just talking about business. I'm just talking about life. Um, but I, I think the good outweighs the bad. There's so much light out there and, and so many positive changes that I'm seeing and I think you're seeing in the industry. Um, and a lot of it has to do with the connection of social media and how we're able to connect in a different way now than we were before. I mean, that's, you're, you literally, you didn't know it, but you literally defined our podcast. No. Oh. Right? Like we get to, like we get to, we get to sit here with Alfredo. I know we get we get to tell Alfredo's story where you know um, when we started the podcast, which you were there when we when when I kind of thought up the idea was that uh, BC when we were talking to Philip, but yeah. um, but like I, it, while I was there, and Alfredo, you're aware of this. While I was there talking to Philip, like people kept handing me their cameras to take pictures with Philip, and and in that moment, it dawned on me like, oh my god, people really care about the hair artists, right? It's not the it's not the three people that you see on the stage anymore. You know, it's it, there's a collective of of hundreds of, of, of hairdressers that are making a difference. And, and, and in that moment, it was like, or within a couple of weeks of that moment, it was like, you know what? People really care about these hairdressers and, and we want to be the ones to get to tell their stories. You know, it's changed. It used to just be about our pictures or about our videos. And I was honestly a little bit late to the game. Like I said, Philip as well, Philip and I kind of like, Philip has blown up as we know, yeah, but he right. wasn't like, he wasn't doing it like back in the beginning either. Like I met him, he was just starting to build his following, you know? Um, and it's been amazing what he's created because his followers are so, but what like we get letters, they write us letters in our Instagrams, like asking us for advice or, I mean, they really feel, and, and we do too, but like, it's like a connection. Like they really um, look up to us for as mentors, if you will. And um, you know, not only what you see on our page, we get a lot of like private messages, like sometimes a lot to keep up with. Um, just really asking us everything you can think of from, it could be a problem they're having with formulation or, personal problems in the salon or what you know, maybe they're a salon owner. I mean, it's, it's across the board. 
um, of what they're reaching out to us for. Um, and I think that's what you saw with them coming up wanting to take pictures with Philip. Like they, they feel like they know us, like they want to be, you know, a, there's like a closeness there. Yeah, exactly. That's what I was going to say. They, you know, they, they watch you so much. They, they have a connection. They do. They feel like they really know you, yeah. mm-hmm. you know? And so, it, you know, when they come up, you know, they, they think they're talking to a friend, right? Absolutely. Which is great. And, and I mean, here to, to, to kiss Phillip's butts a little bit more, but like, <laughs> I mean, like there's not a better role model either. I mean, between, I'll even speak for, uh, for Ricky because we sat with him and Alfred, I'll speak for you as well. I mean, these are just really good role models, really good people for our industry, you know, and it's not like, and I think the days of the jerk hairdresser are, are kind of done or, or, or on their way out, you know, like, like there's really good people in this industry. And, and once again, the podcast, we can attest to that. I mean, we, there's been very, very few people that have given us grief about, about the podcast or not wanting to come on. It's been, it's pretty universal now, you know, in, Al, with Al, in Alfredo's case, you know, it took us a little while to kind of arrange it, but, but, but he was, he's always been available to us. Yeah. Well, thank you. No, I'm excited. We finally got to do it. I swear. I feel like every time I was like, Oh, I'm going to be in blah, blah, blah. I'm not here that day or something. I'm always on a plane. Yeah, no doubt. <laughs> I kind of, do you want to, let's talk about the Philip and stuff, man, the relationship and what they're doing on social media. A hundred percent. Yeah. How did the, how did, did the boy band get together? Yeah. Well, so first I knew Ricky, like I said, he was one of the first B3 artists. So Ricky and I traveled all over together and uh, we're on stage together everywhere. Um, and I think at first, you know, Ricky, like he had been on stage with butterfly, but that was more like music playing and just like getting down on some hair so when it came mm-hmm. to B3, it was a little more education driven because I, I needed him to talk and explain the product and what the pros were. And it was so cool to watch him evolve. I think now he's such a, I mean, he always was, but now he's, I think he's a more polished educator. Um, he's so good at stage, but he's managed to keep his charm and what everybody loved about Ricky from the beginning. He's never lost that even moving to LA, like the Louisiana boy, I still see him in there. You know, the funniness, the humor, uh, the, the sweetness, you know, I think what you hear about Ricky mostly is um, he's not at all what I expected when I met him. I think, I don't know what they expect, but he's always so nice. And like what you just said, the jerk hairdresser days are over. He's so welcoming. Um, and then Philip, what happened is Ricky was at a salon with A-Rod the barber. Um, and I was more of like, I'm like, I'm actually now going to finally have like a studio that's like devoted that is mine. But I'm like, a, was a floating hairdresser really? because I I travel so much. So I'd go like do a collaboration with somebody like I'd be in New York and I'd just be at a salon for a few days making videos. And with Ricky, it was the same. He'd have me come in and then Philip ended up working there. I just walked in one day and Ricky's like, there's this really cool guy. His name's Philip. I'm going to start working with him. He's an amazing cutter. Um, and the first day I believe we made a video together, um, like two videos and I'd never met Philip before. And what I loved about Philip was he's just so calm. It's funny, him and Ricky are kind of the opposite. They're opposites. Completely. And Philip, like mm-hmm. you look at Philip and you think he's going to be some crazy partier with the dreads. Philip is so focused and business driven and calm and just like has such a, he's so collected, you know, and he knows exactly what he wants and exactly what he's doing. And, he, you know, he's just, I think he's brilliant. And, and so is Ricky, but just in different ways. Ricky's like, they're both artists, but Ricky's like a typical like artist. Like you never know what he's going to say. You know, he has an <laughs> idea and he's just like, let's do this now. Now let's try that. You know, he's all over the place and he's that kind of artist, but it's what he creates is brilliant as well. It's just, he's like a mastermind of, of color, right? And formulation and all that. Um, so the three of us, we made a video and I remember we decided to be kind of humorous in the video. And the video is still, I think one of my most, are all of our most viewed videos ever. Um, we had so much fun on this model and, and from that moment on, we were just like, we had so much fun that day. We're like, we need to start doing this all the time. Like this was incredible. And sometimes a rod would be in the video with us. Yeah. And then obviously sometimes I would be traveling. So they did a lot of videos without me, like of a rod Philip and, and then, you know, Ricky and Philip ended up working in a studio together every day. So then, you know, we started seeing like a flood of content from the two of them. And I think they kind of became known as a duo, uh, for yeah. sure. Um, and then what happened is Philip is so interesting because whereas Ricky's fashion color oriented, Philip loves to do naturals as well. Cause Philip co- and I both come from Beverly Hills. We used to work around the corner from each other without even knowing it. Um, and then Philip was at Privé 
And, you know, I was at the Argyle and Kristoff back in those days. Those were two of like the, you know, or three of the big salons. Um, and obviously he was doing the Kardashians, you know, like we have similar backgrounds with like working with celebrities and stuff. So he and I would sometimes do collaborations when he wasn't with Ricky because our travel schedules are all so insane. Like Ricky would be with Matrix like in Spain and then in UK and here and I would be traveling, you know, all over the place. And Philip, we all have different travel schedules. So Philip and I sometimes would start doing natural clients, balayage, blonding, and Philip would do these beautiful long layer cuts. And uh, Philip kind of, I think he got the best end of the deal, right? Because he got like his fashion. He got color partner, guys, yeah. his natural color partner. And yeah. the most fun we would have is when all three of us would come together, you know, and do, do something yeah. together. But it was, it's just kind of just those three different uh, scenarios with us. Oh, we enjoyed it. I mean, as, as a fan and as, you know, it, it's like I'm watching a, like a little mini series. You know what I mean? I couldn't wait for the next one to come out. <laughs> it's, it's crazy right now. I have 10 videos that haven't even seen the light of day yet. Cause I, at the end of the year and beginning of this year, things slowed down a little bit for me. So I just went crazy with like models. I, I had my manager start reaching out to all the models that have been like contacting me that I hadn't been able to get to. And we just started busting out videos. So there's like so much, so many getting ready to come out. <laughs> all right. Yeah, it's so awesome. So, so cool. The stories are cool. So, what's uh, Alfredo's future the, for the or 2019? Uh, I know Alfredo's future. I don't. I have no idea. Um, I, I mean, I do, but I don't. But I do know 2019. Um, so, so what's cool is um, I started working. You know, Ricky and Philip are both with Matrix, as everybody knows. Um, and so towards the end of the year, I, st I went in to work with them and it was really cool. So, um, matrix, there's matrix and biolage and they're kind of in the mm -hmm. same family, but they're at a point right now where they're, um, separating the brands a bit and biolage is going to start standing more on their own, which is a really exciting time for them. They're coming out with some incredible innovative products next year. And they're a very natural uh, for those people listening that maybe don't know biolage is incredible. What I love about them is they're the real deal. Everything from how, they preserve the planet with the way that they create their products. I mean, they're like from conception to launch, everything they do is about, you know, the planet and natural and healthy, you know, uh, the way that they go about things. Um, I got to see firsthand just like the, the, their entire operation is, is kind of mind blowing for what it does for the environment. Um, and matrix is obviously an incredible brand. Um, and I've always loved their products. Like I said, from the beginning, I was in a L'Oreal salon. Um, and they're part of the L'Oreal family. And so I've been exposed to their products for a long time. So they brought me out to New York. Um, and I didn't know what was happening, to be honest with you. They brought me in because Biolage is going to be coming out with a natural, no lift technology hair color next year, which they haven't had hair color, uh, you know, plant-based hair color. So it's going to be super exciting next year. And they brought me out and my mind immediately went to like, oh, this is henna. You know, like, right. I don't like, I was kind of skull and crossbones to them. Um, mm -hmm. And they're like, well, that's why we want you though. Like you're an extreme colorist. We want to see what happens if we throw you into this environment and let you play with this color. We want to see what you think of it. Cool. So I came in uh, under the guise of like, okay, I'm going to help them. Cause I'm obviously very, I've, I've had my experience with R and D and I love hair color. I came in more to help guide them. Like, this is how I think you sell this, but I'm never going to use it, if that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> um, and they brought me out for two weeks. I had an apartment, and I lived there for two weeks, and every day was an adventure. Uh, they, what I loved about them, and I think this speaks to what's happening in the industry, what, what I just said about artists working with brands, um, I don't think this would have ever happened even a year ago. Two years ago, for sure. They let me come in. They brought me into their testing facility. They asked me what kind of models I wanted. I looked at pictures the next day, the models would all be sitting there and they just told me how it worked, what the directions were. And they sat back and watched me. I had no instruction. They let me create whatever I wanted. And they told me what they could do. Like these are, these can cover gray up to 60%. These are a toner. You know, they told me what they gave me the baseline and then they just let me create and, you know, gave me complete creative freedom. And uh, wow. every day was like, in advance, they let me go to the lab, which I think, I think I was the first, don't quote me on this, but I, I believe I was told I was the first whatever hair artist that was allowed into the L'Oreal labs and given access to like what's going on behind the scenes. And they were even resistant there. At first they were like, 
give me your phone. Don't do this. Like they were so freaked out that I was in there. But by the end of the day, they warmed up to me and they were letting me take videos and they, you know, mm-hmm. and now like, I love them. Like I've, you know, actually like DMing some of the people from the labs, like talking about, you know, it's been really a cool, cool evolution that's happened um, of them like accepting me. And I know I'm pretty sure Ricky, they took him there when he was in New York recently. And it was funny because when I was there, they're like, oh yeah, no, like we're never, we can't take any other artists here. But I think now they're opening their mind to bringing some other artists into the labs. And it's really an exciting time over at L'Oreal. I feel like from what I'm seeing happening they're, you know, they they were saying that where we got in the two weeks I was there was like what would have taken them months, you know, to get to. Um, and it's just kind of changed the way that they're going to be doing research and development moving forward. So it's super exciting. Um, and I fell in love with the color. That's the craziest part. By the, really? by the end of it, I was having so much fun and I was inspired. And I think they saw me going like, I'm going to mix, mix this with this and I'm going to do this. And I went from just like a robot, just going through the motions to they saw me getting inspired. And to actually creating. Yeah, so much so that like I said, I need you guys to send me like samples to LA. And they did. Uh, I put out a video the other day and it was the first time that they allowed me to say what I had been doing this whole time. Cause I was always like kind of mysterious, even though everybody was saying, you know, this is henna. And and I, I don't, I won't get into it too much, but it's a totally different technology. Like it works with traditional hair color. You can lift it out of the hair. A lot of the things that you can never do with henna. Um, so I think it's going to blow people's minds. Um, and I think, I, yeah. think, I think Schwarzkopf had something like that similar about 20 years ago. Like they had a plant base. Yeah, well, so did like, you know, lots of people have tried to do it. Um, but the way they're approaching this is just, I'm so pleased with it. And um it's just been so fun. The team at Biolage, is, they're just incredible humans. They really are. I love all of them. Um, and, and also, I've, you know, now I'm a Matrix Artistic Ambassador. So it's going to be interesting for me because I'm going to have my hand in both. You know, they kind of want to yeah, separate. More, they're going to be stretching They're allowing you. me to come in and, and do that. So I'm going to be um, going to Germany. I leave a week from Friday and I'm going to their education conference and I'm going to be presenting uh, Biolage Color to the L'Oreal community and Matrix community for the first time. Um, so it's going to be crazy. I'm going to be doing live models and presenting it. And then there's a Matrix Elevate Me in Cancun. Like, I literally am home for two days. Welcome to my life. I, it, the year has started. And I'm flying out. And uh, it's, a, it's a huge conference where everybody from Matrix is going to be there. And we share ideas and knowledge from around the world. Um, so it'll kind of, those two events, I think are going to be my first public outings with the team over at Matrix and Biolage. Um, and I'll definitely be talking a lot about, uh, Biolage color because that's kind of like, it, it was only supposed to be a one-time thing. And they've asked me to see the product through to launch, which is super exciting because I got so connected with them. And then I thought I was just going to walk away. <laughs> so it's exciting to, to get to continue this journey with them all the way to the launch next year, uh, later this year. So you're saying you're not slowing down in 2019? No, I think I'm more focused, more driven. I know exactly what I want right now. Like I, I, and what's great is they're embracing me as an artist. And like, I think for a huge brand like L'Oreal to, um, you know, and Matrix Biolage to um, take me in like that and to ask me what I want and to, you know, they said, you know, we don't think you belong behind a desk. We think that you belong with people, you belong doing hair, but we also want you to be involved in in this executive side as well. And we're going to figure it out. We've never had that before. And we don't even know what to call you, but let's try it. Let's try different things. And and for a brand that large to be that open to me and to embrace who I am, you know, because I think a lot of people didn't know what to do with me. When I did this whole B3 thing, they're like, we don't even know what to do with you. Like, you know, (laughs) people see things black or white, right? Like you're an artist and you're in the salon or else you're an executive. And that's what I mean by the change we're going to see in the industry. Like I think for a brand like L'Oreal to, to acknowledge that in me and to let me thrive, is going to be really exciting. So it makes me excited about uh, this year. I, I, you know, it's going to be an amazing journey. That's all I can say. That's awesome. I can't wait to just keep watching you. you know? <laughs> yeah. yeah and, and, and we're doing independent education. Like Philip and I are going to Peru. And That's amazing. we're going to be doing a huge show and we just got asked to go to the United Emirates. Um, wow. And then I've got a lot of travel with Matrix coming up, a lot of blonding. We're going to be focusing on blonding and, and toners. And I'm going to be, I know like Amsterdam, Russia, um, like it's going to be a lot of, a lot of travel this year. 
and a lot of exciting stuff coming up. Oh, I can't wait to, to watch and <laughs> see yeah. everything online. Yeah. I mean, that's, and I'll be at all exciting. the shows except ISSE. I'm, I'm sad at yeah. FOMO because I'm going to miss the Nahas and all that. Um, but uh, I'm going to be with Matrix, like I said, in Germany. But I will be at uh, IBS New York and uh, ABS Chicago and Premier Orlando. I'm booked on all those shows. Speaking of Orlando, I wonder if we can get a boy band podcast in Orlando. Oh my gosh, that'd be amazing. I know last year it was really hard to get uh, Ricky and Philip kind of to, <laughs> to, to, to sit at a table. You know, they were just so busy. Remember that time we saw Ricky and he was like, I got to go, guys. You know, right. he kind of yeah, pushed us to the side. I'm, I'm, I've got my seatbelt fastened because it was already hard work when I was with B3, but with, with Matrix, <laughs> I know that they, you know, believe in excellence and it is like no joke. Like it's 5 a.m. call times it's mm -hmm. you know they they run a tight ship it's it's they expect excellence at the shows on stage everything from your models your you know the results prep uh you know performance so they it's it's not like a party it's like serious work when you're at the shows for for us <laughs> awesome yeah. hey, alfredo uh give us real quick like how people can get in touch with you what's your instagram you know for those that that one person that might not be following yeah. you let's uh let's um figure out my how instagram is alfredo a l f R E D O underscore uh, Lewis L E W I S, um, and the best place to find me is Instagram. I have a face, Facebook uh, Instagram, which is Alfredo Lewis Hair, but it's not that you know uh, built like my Instagram. And also, I'm trying to get more into YouTube, so I've been starting to put more videos on there. But honestly, for me, the most success I'm having right now is IGTV, and I, I think people need to realize like it. I think it's going to be huge next year. They kind of got off to a weird, you know, they just kind of put it out there with not a, a lot of mm -hmm. guidance. Uh, but I've been playing with it a lot and I've been getting so much engagement and growth from using the platform and putting longer form videos out there. Um, so my channel is, is really good on there because if you want to see more of my videos, like I've been putting longer, like the videos I wish I could make on Instagram, but I don't have time with the one minute. Um, I've been putting those on IGTV. So if they want to check those out, that's probably a good way to see more of me if they want awesome my friend thank you uh just yeah amazing i mean like like now we're do the, the do the slowdown but man like he's an executive and he's a hairdresser and he's building teams i mean he's doing it all for the industry man mm -hmm. i'm just like dude thank you so much thanks for joining us um thank you for doing what you do to our industry i mean that's i mean that's you know we can't thank you enough for being such a uh, positive inspirational and just a you know an awesome amazing hairdresser yeah no doubt you know, thank you that, that means a lot to me you guys i'm i just love what i do and i love our community and hairstylists and i think there's a lot of great people out there doing amazing things so i'm just happy to be a part of everything with you guys thanks for what you're doing bringing these stories to light letting people get to know us better thank you. yeah yeah thank you very much peace and love brother peace uh, and love so Mr. Alfredo Lewis, thank you very, very much for joining us on your day off. Hey, hey, so there it is. Hey, this is a message that um, we've been trying to bring, I don't know, for the last couple of months, actually since we started the podcast. Hey, so if you like the podcast or if you find that it's useful, please, please, please leave us a review, a five-star review on iTunes. Um, leave us a rating and a review. But if you don't like it, forget about it <laughs> yeah totally forget about this message we also want to thank sarah and blaine from pretty gritty uh sarah and blaine they are a band out of uh, portland oregon and we just want to thank them very much for allowing us to use their song pleased to meet you on our podcast um that's cool i think you can find actually you can you can find their music on um on itunes peace and hair grease <laughs>